Dear students, in this module, we'll try to see what kind of energy-based methods can be employed to determine the RNA secondary structure. As you would know, very little amount of RNA structures have been experimentally determined. The two reasons behind this problem is, one, the RNA molecule is not stable, and two, the methods employed are extremely expensive. So therefore, we will look for computational tools that can help us predict the RNA secondary structure from the primary structure. However, given a one prime structure, there are so many possibilities that exist for the two prime structure. So how can we select the optimal two prime structure? That is a very complex question. One strategy, a simple strategy would be to list down all the possible two prime structures and try to see which one has the longest or the most nucleotides that are coupled, the complementary nucleotides. But the stability of two such structures can be different and therefore we need to really look at their energy profile. For that you can look at the energy table and then determine how much energy is given out as a result of formation of a specific two prime structure? If two two prime structures have different values for their energy output, then you can of course go for the structure that has more energy given out. The table is given for you here. Just to remind you, this is the energy that is given out as a result of coupling between A and U. And this is the energy that is given out as a result of coupling of G and C. So all you have to do is, you have to scan your entire RNA 2' prime structure, add all the energies up and come at a number which will tell you about the stability of that molecule. One thing that you may need to factor in is the destabilizing effect. So in this uh, discussion, we have only looked at the energy that is given out as a result of coupling between A and U or G and C or vice versa. However, there are some nucleotides such as the nucleotides in the eye of the hairpin or nucleotides in the bulge that are not coupled. These uncoupled nucleotides they tend to make the RNA structure unstable. Therefore, we may want to look at the instability introduced by such nucleotides as well. Okay, so given an RNA molecule, what are the possible two prime combinations that can exist? Let's take a look at this structure. In this structure, you have a hairpin loop, you have an internal loop, you have a multi-loop, an external base, un unpaired of course, and a bulge. I will highlight all the unstability introducing nucleotides in red now. This nucleotide is unstable, this is unstable, this is unstable, this is unstable. Similarly, these nucleotides that are in the internal loop are also introducing instability because they are uncoupled. The same is true for these nucleotides as well as this one, this one and these five. So all the nucleotides that I have indicated in red are a source of instability for the RNA molecule. However, you would know that they are also responsible for the formation of the tertiary structures. Now I will indicate the nucleotides that are responsible for adding stability, for making the RNA 2' prime structure more stable, in blue. So this is the stem of the hairpin loop. This is the helix. And you can see that the nucleotide in blue bonded together. Any algorithm that is going to calculate the stability will essentially be the blue nucleotides plus the red nucleotides. The value of energy for the blue nucleotides will be negative and for the red, they'll be positive. 
So, the combination that can be formed as a result is the hairpin plus interior loop plus exterior loop plus bulge plus hairpin. So, the sum of energies can actually help you determine the stability of the two prime structure. So, stability is a negative value. Instability is a positive value. If you sum them up, you should arrive at a negative value. The more negative the value is, the more stable your structure will be. So, now for you to think about a very interesting argument. So, the two prime structure, if you want to predict, what would you do? Would you go for the longest complementary sequence or would you go for calculating the energy of the entire molecule including the bonded and the non-bonded nucleotides.